Remember when the state-of-the-art games looked like this? Back in the day, the 1993 Doom was the game to be played. To play Doom, you needed something like this. Socket 3 motherboard and 486 processor. Here we have some boards and CPUs ready for testing, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're also going to somewhat inform you how to set up your own Socket 3 board. So, welcome to our adventures in Socket 3. We have a total of 5 Socket 3 motherboards. These are all baby AT format motherboards, but they differ in size depending on their length. They're all released somewhere around 94 95 and all have integrated IDE and floppy controllers. We can start with Zida or Zyda for DPS, cause really it does a lot more damage. It supports all of Socket 3 CPUs, including Cyrix 5x86 and Intel Overdrive ones. Released in 1995 at the very end of Socket 3 lifecycle. It sports SIS 85C496 chipset, has 3 16-bit ISA, 3 PCI and 2 memory sockets for up to 64 megabytes of memory. Nicely, it uses now standard CR2032 battery socket instead of integrated leaky one. With its petite form factor boon of features controlled with our BIOS, it would be a damn shame if this one is faulty. Here we have one very similar board to the previous one. It's Lucky Star LS-486E. Featuring same SIS chipset, CPU support and most of the other features as well. Largest difference is presence of two additional memory slots for up to total of 128 MB of memory. It also lacks cache chips, so we'll have to find those on a different board. Their disappearance is not a good sign. Our third board is SOA Research SR-M401-A. It utilizes UMC UM8881-8886 chipset. Released somewhere around the 94, it supports up to DX4 processors. While it has better battery, it doesn't seem to have leaked yet. Beside the integrated ID controller, it has 4 16-bit ISA, 3 PCI and 4 memory slots for up to 256 MB of memory. It's governed with American Megatrends BIOS on a standard chip. Next one is a board from brands still active today. It's Gigabyte GA-486AM-S. It uses the same UMC chipset as the previous one and also supports up to DX4 CPUs. Has 4 ISA, 3 PCI and 4 memory slots for up to 128 MB of memory. Supported with an award BIOS. Instead of battery, it has Dallas real-time clock chip with an integrated one. Board is medium size and with a nice amount of features. Last but not least is Traintech 486 SPM, a very nice board from 1994, also sporting SIS 84C496 chipset, but lacking support for Cyrix 5x86. This board supports up to DX4 and Overdrive CPUs. It has 4 16-bit ISA, 3 PCI and 4 memory slots for up to 128 MB of memory. Despite its limits, it's a pretty versatile board, with its detailed award BIOS. It had a leaky battery, so we had to cut it and clean the oxidation damage. This is the only known working board that we have. Other four were in unknown condition prior to this testing, so we'll start our test with it. As for CPUs, we have four of them. We start with Intel 486DX2-66MHz. Released in 1992, it's the most powerful of DX2 line, and very common. So common that we have another one, but this one is with a heatsink. The next one we have is AMD's AM486DX4-100 enhanced chip. The CPU works on 3x33MHz which equals 100MHz. Yep, that's CPU math for you. It also has different features compared to the non-enhanced version, and its setup is different than for a regular AM486, so check the exact model to see which variant you got. The final CPU we have is AM486DX4 non-enhanced version. This one has a heatsink and a cooler. We don't know which exact model it is, but we don't care much at the moment. For a video card we'll use this S3 Trio 64V Plus card. Not much to say here, it's PCI and it works fine. As for memory, we have some memory. While testing we'll be using this no-name Chinese power supply. It's an AT power supply, which is standard prior to the ATX. And we need such a power supply that works reliably. Its output is not great, but it's within 5% margin, so it'll do fine. Now that we have everything ready, let's proceed to test stuff. Remember when connecting AT power supply, wires are supposed to go black to black. Also, there is a pin with square base that goes into corner with least amount of pins. There are more pin slots than pins in this case, so just put your CPU in the middle. 
Also, fuck Molex connectors. With this PS slash 2 to dim adapter, we can use this entry keyboard on these computers. With everything connected and our small test monitor set to VGA input, we can try to run this machine. Remember, we connected our Chaintech motherboard. We get an floppy error, which is completely fine considering the BIOS has no battery to remember that we don't have any floppy drives here. So that's one out of one for both motherboards and CPUs. Before we test any further CPUs, we have to change pin layout according to motherboard's documentation. We will expand on this topic in a separate video. Next, we are testing AMD's DX4-100 Enhanced. We get a post, which means we are 2 out of 2 for CPUs. Sadly, when we are about to place one of our DX2-66 CPUs into the socket, we notice that it's missing a pin. The damage is repairable and CPU might work fine afterwards. But for now, we are 2 out of 3 for CPUs. With everything already set up, we'll test our second 66 MHz CPU. Once again we get a post, and that places a 3 out of 4 total CPUs. Our next subject is the Gigabyte board, and while it did give some signs of life, we couldn't get an image or a beep code error whatever we did. In situations like this, it's probably best to use PCI test card, but unfortunately we don't have one currently. That's 1 out of 2 for motherboards. The next one is for DPS, we've set it up and ran it. And according to the beep code, it worked fine, but we had no image. Apparently, we had an issue with faulty first PCI slot, so we had to place the graphics card into the second one. It's not a big deal, we still have plenty to go by for our needs. As for SOA research board, this board simply gave us no signs of life. That's a sad 2 out of 4 for motherboards. Next in line is our lucky star. First. We need to donate some cash ships to it. We borrowed ones from the Gigabyte board, and according to documentation, this should be working fine on this motherboard. But alas, we still get no signs of life. Board was probably already dead when someone stripped everything they could use. So that's a 2 out of 5, and perhaps Gigabyte 1 could be made to work. 3 out of 4 CPUs and 2 out of 5 motherboards. We are somewhere around 50% success rate and that is fine. We also tested our memory and most of the sticks were working just fine. However, this is just initial testing and we might encounter problems with this hardware and prolonged usage. We had a lot of fun testing this around 30 years old hardware. The plan is to drop another video on how to set it up yourself if you ever get your hands on some of this stuff. Also, we're going to benchmark some of this stuff. For now, we hope you had as much fun as we did. See you around.